I want to show you how to make a camera slider using an ordinary drawer glide that you can get at a hardware store with a Lego motor to pull it back. This gives you smooth, kind of Hollywood style camera moves, completely operator free. We'll start by building the slider itself and then show you how to mount it on a tripod and then I'll show you how to make the Lego gear down. This drawer slide is a side mount KV8400 by Nape and Vote. This is a 12 inch long one. It has three different telescoping parts which ride against each other on ball bearings. These come in sets of two, and two of them cost anywhere from $15 to $25. Now these are made to be mounted on the sides of a drawer, but we'll be using it laid out flat with the camera mounted on it. It's not quite as optimal to have the ball bearings working that way, but they still work pretty fine. Here's one that's been uh, worked already, and one thing I did is lower that stop on the end. And then to drill out a hole for the quarter 20 thumb screw. Now the other things you'll need are some wood in order to match the quick release plate, whatever kind you have. I have a Velbon style. And the Velbon uses 3 8 inch thick wood approximately. You'll need that depth for your quick release wedge and about an inch and three quarters square. Here's how it looks after it's been tapered or beveled on the sides. And I'll make three of these wedges to mount on different positions on the bottom of the drawer slide to give me some options for setting up the tripods. Now this is the base plate for the Lego gear down motor. This is about seven and a half inches long by about three and three quarters, three and seven eighths inches wide. And that's just enough space to hold the Lego apparatus. And I hold that down with clips. I start by rough cutting the wedges and then I use a vertical belt sander to get really nice straight tapering angles and gradually work my way smaller and smaller till it fits into the receptacle on top of this Velmon tripod. Now since this camera slider has such a long range of operation with so much weight distribution I've made three different mounts so that you can mount it on two tripods with some space between them here and here or you can mount it if you're traveling at less distance you can mount it on the central one and kind of average out the weight distribution. So one of the wedges goes underneath the base plate and once I bend down the flange at the end of the drawer slide I have three different points where I can put in a small wood screw. That wood screw is long enough to go through the base plate into the wedge below it to hold the wedge on. Now there are positions underneath the bottom plate that you can access through the middle slider to screw the whole thing down at different positions into those wedges. So here are the three positions that I have. The Lego gear down motor goes on here and it has a string that reaches out and then a Lego piece that attaches to another Lego piece that I screwed onto the top slider element. And that's what's going to pull the camera closer to the gear down. By building wide flat pieces on the base of the gear down motor, I have something to clip onto the base plate. Now the motor is powered by a battery pack using AAA batteries and that I found that gives it plenty of power for a long period of time. 
Now, there's a motor that drives a larger gear, and then that outputs over here to yet a larger gear, so it's always small to large, and that slows down the speed of the motor to something manageable. So here's the basic principle. For every one revolution of that small gear, that larger one goes much slower because it has more teeth. The string is taken up on a little take-up reel, and that I made out of wood. Here's the battery box. The orange switch will reverse the direction of the motor. Here's the Lego motor, and it all attaches together. Now this unit does make a certain amount of noise, and that's an issue for some live recording. So you can muffle it with felt or just keep it away from the microphones. Now this is my biggest gear down. It goes from the smallest gear to the largest gear four times. And that makes it so that the string will only pull one foot in 15 minutes. So you can see all those gear downs. So one foot in 15 minutes, or about an inch per minute, roughly. Now this is a separate gear down that goes from small to large about three times. So this one moves about the right speed for a live action as opposed to a time-lapse sequence. So using regular Legos and Technics Legos, I'm building up from the bottom and putting the axles through those holes in the walls as I build them, making sure that I put the axles high enough for those big gears. So I made three different um, gear down units for different speeds. And one of them I made so that I can switch the speeds by, by shifting over the little sprockets. Uh, I would suggest just getting a bunch of different size gears and experimenting until you find out the gear combination that gives you the speed you want. But I find that for time lapse, that about one foot in 15 minutes is about right. And for live action, approximately an inch per second is about right to give you the feeling of camera movement. Now you build up the sides high enough so that the gears aren't sticking over it, and that way you can attach the battery unit to the top of the frame. You need a good strong braided cord for this, and once you attach that to the Lego controller, you can test it with a timer to see what you're getting. Now here it is in action. Here's a painting that I'm doing. The camera's brought in close, just close enough so the brush handle doesn't hit the camera. And then I rotate it back. You can see the clock shows you how fast time is going by. And then it goes back to its full distance. So this whole distance traveled is about a foot, but it feels like more than that. It seems to work best for pulling a camera back but it also works for a lateral move like this. And with it focused on the background, the lateral move does the same thing. And the nice thing about this dolly system as opposed to other dolly systems I find is that you don't see the tracks anywhere in the shot. And the whole thing is very lightweight and versatile and portable. Okay, thanks for watching. You might want to check out my website or subscribe to my channel. And then here's a playlist with more good stuff and a video that continues the story. So check them out and share with your friends.